This episode of Techzilla is brought to you by Netflix. Time to get our AC Nation on. Jim wrote in, and I should point out Jim's our CEO and boss man. <laughs> he says, so I really want to buy that BT50 Panasonic Plasma 65-inch HD TV. Me I watched too. the Amazon price drop from roughly 3000 to around 2700 The previous version, the BT3065, is now available for $2,000. i would pay $2,200. When do you think the price will drop to that level? How can I keep track? Thanks, Jim. That is a great question. When to buy, right. because nobody really wants to pay more than you have to when you're shopping for a new HDTV. And there are a few things that any bargain hunter should keep in mind when you're shopping away. One, HDTV prices are really never more expensive than when they are initially shipping. Uh, new TVs start shipping in the spring, with the larger and more advanced models appearing well into fall. We still haven't seen all of the 2012 right. models yet for this year. And that's that's something that's it's really strange, because like at CES, Big excitement. This is our lineup. Here's and what's then coming. Three, four months later, they start showing up. And then three or four months after that, like September, October, November, the last of that the year's premium models, models usually up. appear then. Sometimes you'll see the smaller models appear earlier in the year. If you're shopping for, for smaller TVs, they, they'll start showing up soon after CES in January. So right. that's about when you can see the new, the new models kick in. When to shop, though, is basically you want to wait for as long as you can until a point. The minute that next year's model shows up in the stores to replace the current model, you will have already seen the lowest price on the current stock. Be aware of that. Also, the HDTV tech in today's models, it will migrate down the product line in, in the following year. So basically, the performance features and the tech that you're seeing in the top models today, it'll migrate into those more affordable models starting next year. Mm -hmm. The good news, really, that, that 65 inch ST50, that's 2100 bucks on Amazon right now. That's not the VT, the top of the line. But that also has a low price guarantee. That's also about the same price as the 55-inch VT50 that I've been drooling over for a while now. Panasonic's top-of-the-line VT50 in the 65-inch screen size is about, let me see, da 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 currently at about $3,300 online, or about 11% lower than its price, its list price after being in stores for about four months now. So if you're going to wait for an additional $1,000 price drop on this particular TV before making the purchase, that might not happen. Watch the price trends for over the next month or two, and then pull the trigger before the, sh the holiday shopping season to get the best price and to avoid some of the madness so, that comes in. So as, as we creep towards Black Friday, are we going to see prices start going up through uh, December 25th and uh, Hanukkah and stuff? Or will, that's or a good question. I, I would say that generally, it, when it starts getting into the crazy shopping season, right. that's when I'd rather not deal with retailers at that point. The prices are going to be about as low as they get by then, but okay. as soon as those new models are announced, and like Jim had mentioned, he, he was looking at last year's top of the line, the ST30. Right. That's probably no longer being produced, and the price might actually be going back up because of the limited supply availability. Right. availability. So that's another one. I, I would ignore that now and move on to the new model that's currently available. And, and like I said, if that top of the line VT50, if you're not willing to spend the extra grand for it, that ST50 for a thousand bucks less gets you most of the same tech. Right. So. And apparently screen size is the important factor again. So and I, I'm glad somebody would rather get the larger screen at a higher price point right. or step down a model and get that same screen size at a lower price point rather yeah. than, you know, You're basically sacrifice. You're talking about a $1,200 VIG between the two. Totally. This. But uh, on my end, I like the VT50 because I have some uh, extremely cool calibration stuff I can do to it compared right. to the ST50, which also has some good calibration stuff, but not quite as good as the VT series. So it's all in there. Great TVs no matter what you do, and I think you're going to be happy either way. It's just yeah. the nerd in me really wants the high-end stuff. What can I say? Well, you are a feral HGTV nerd. That, but a question <laughs> for the audience really is, how do you track sales prices on the gear you want? And I'd really love to know. I mean, I, I tend to follow one site that I trust mm -hmm. and look at prices over time, but I'd like to know how you do it and let us know via Twitter, email, Facebook, Google+, Carrier Pigeon. At DK Inyasha on Twitter writes in, at Robert Heron, does Blu-ray offer anything to image quality of older animation, something like Disney or anime compared to upconverting on DVD? That's a good question. Uh, most definitely yes. Uh, upconverted video and, and Blu-ray, those are not the same thing. Those this, are not even close. This is obviously not classic uh, uh, Disney animation, but one no. of the things we found with a lot of the classic films being reissued is they've gone through the trouble of rescanning it, scanning it 4K. For The Wizard of Oz, they rescanned the entire movie at 8K, I want to say. I think it was Wizard of Oz, they scanned at 8K. That's about the limit of the current technology. Yeah, manually as as... corrected each individual frame of the movie, right? So, you know, for Jaws, they basically they went through digitally remastered, fully restored, which means they, they take the best 
best print, or better yet, the best negative they can get. They match everything, they correct it, they take the scratches out, they color correct it. The Wizard of Oz looks completely different now because they've actually made it look exactly the way it did when they put it in theaters in 1934. Totally. Cool now, that? And when we talk about upconverting, or you have an upconverting DVD player, mm -hmm. it is, at best, it is guessing about the approximately 1.7 million pixels, <laughs> pixels or so of the <laughs> virtual information being generated in each frame. There is no magic enhance button for this stuff, and the qu quality scaling, basically, of that SD video, that, that 300 and, what is it, 345,600 pixels right. at maximum, compare that to over 2 million pixels for Blu-ray, and basically, it's only going to get you so far. When you deal with bigger 1080p screens, you're going to notice these detail differences more than ever, and projection owners definitely are know what we're talking about here. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're, stretching, you're stretching a frame to be stretching HD to fill HD, which isn't isn't too noticeable on like a 30 inch HDTV or your 17 inch, you know, uh, screen on on 17, 14 inch screen in your de on your desktop. Totally, your, your notebook. Stretch it up to 100 inches, like my my projector, and you're like, wow, look at all the smeary artifacts. The Is display it? has the same number of pixels, like when you're upscaling, right. but but the video, the video that you're feeding it, started off in DVD anyway. The format has about 350,000 pixels to deal with, right. and you're trying to convert that up to something that has over two million pixels and it is literally in real time guessing about what should go where and it is never going to be as good as having a yeah. source material that is high def to begin with. Now when we talk about the difference between Blu-ray and, and DVD basically if we looked at what, well this is a confusing chart, but here's HD. We're talking 1920 by 1080 pixels and if we come all the way back here to, oh, we'll say approximately maybe WVGA or VGA is really in the yeah. area of where you're talking about where standard definition and DVD resolution is and it's night and day so we're talking literally about six times more pixels and in terms of data per second about four times more data per second so when you're talking really complex scenes like fire or explosions oh. or fast action that extra bit rate keeps the image quality nice and crisp now when you talk about Disney classics these are going to generally be treated a lot better than yeah. other anime that you're going to come across that high school movie from the 80s they're going to do a cheap scan they're going to puke it onto the blu-ray and and they're done Dizzy's Alice in Wonderland. Yeah, oh, I mean, as an example, take a look at this. I mean, they, they went through this one, and if I could just scroll down real quickly to where they get into some of the, the quality as far as the visuals go, uh, five star rating. And some of the some of the some of the quotes in here, it has never been this beautiful. Uh, let's see here. Perfect is a lofty word, but little else can convey just how remarkable, rewarding, and spectacular the studio's frame by frame restoration mm -hmm. and exquisite 1080p ABC encoded presentation truly are. I if, if you love anime and something has been re-released on Blu-ray, you, you will never have seen it better. It was not this good when it was in the theater. Fully cool. The first time I saw Fully Cooly was 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 you know sort of a user sent out. SD file over the internet. The second time was on DVD. The third time on Blu-ray. Freaking amazing. Go to Amazon, get your Blu-ray search on, find the anime, the classic anime that you love, and hopefully it's been lovingly restored. Sometimes they puke an SD thing onto a Blu-ray. Read the reviews, yeah. read the notes from the fans out there. Chances are you can find a really, really, hopefully you can find a really, really beautiful translation of your favorite one. Totally. And, and if, if you have a particular piece of HD or, or uh, HD anime or even cartoon or whatever that looks especially good on Blu-ray, I'd like to know what that source material mm -hmm. is. Uh, do email us at techzilla at revision3.com and let us know. Let us know what you're putting your eyeballs on that looks good to you. Hey, we wanted to mention, I held it up earlier, Jaws is now out on Blu-ray. If you want to dun, see the movie dun, that started dun, the dun, shark dun, craze dun. or the shark fear craze, the crazed fear of sharks, check this one out. One of the cool things about this release is how they went about restoring the film. We're going to put a link in the show notes, but it involved going to their film vault, grabbing the original negatives. And then they did things like wet gate scans where they submerged the film in liquid while scanning, plus a whole bunch of digital Way correction. Cool. Yeah, it's extremely <laughs> cool. But do remember, this is a movie. Don't go putting the hate on sharks just because Spielberg did a really good job of making you afraid in a movie theater. The whites are my friends. The white sharks are my friends now, even when I'm surfing. I just missed how empty the beaches were for a few weeks after that movie came out. <laughs> and now it's time to thank one of our sponsors. Listen, if you're not using Netflix, you're wasting money. Why? Because with Netflix, you can instantly watch as many movies as you want, anytime you want, for one low monthly price. There are no late fees or due dates. You get the best in home video from great dramas, cinema classics, documentaries, the latest blockbuster movies, outrageous TV shows, all available at your fingertips. So say goodbye to driving to a video store or waiting for discs to show up in the mail. Use Netflix and instantly watch your shows stream straight to your computer, iPad, Kindle, or HDTV via an Xbox, PS3, Wii, Roku box, or any Netflix-enabled set-top box. 
As a new member and a Techzilla viewer, you can get a free 30-day trial membership. Go to netflix.com slash techzilla and sign up. For our friends in the UK and Ireland, you can get the same deal with netflix.co.uk slash techzilla and netflix.ie slash techzilla. And be sure to use this URL so that they know we sent you.